Good morning, folks. We've got a solar eruption to diagnose, a big quake to review, and top science stories that crescendo with the collision of climate science and catastrophism. Let's get started at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun bringing the northern coronal hole through center disk. Despite the decay of the sunspot groups facing Earth, the southern incoming region released a solid little CME. The flare associated with the release only hit mid-C-class range and included a small filament ejected at the point of the flare. SOHO this morning is not fully updated, and it only shows the bulk ejecta, leaving the sun to out behind Earth's orbit. But there may be an edge to that CME that is coming our way. We'll tell later today when SOHO updates. And as we watch the eruption again, we see the wide coronal effects of the shock wave. I would not be shocked at all if indeed a little part of that CME was coming our way, but of course, a glancing blow off a C-class blast. It's more of an academic exercise than something to fear. Let's head out to Seismicity next, where the West Pacific Blot Echo signatures hit south of the big quake in the Philippines yesterday, which was also a Blot Echo itself at over 100 kilometers down. The Panama quake a few days ago showed a powerful positive OLR anomaly. Yesterday's quake was near the negative anomaly, although the key atmospheric signal was definitively the global electric circuit influence of the typhoon set to hit China here soon. Of course, the coronal hole earthquake watch was still in effect. All the timing and location forecasting information is found at quakewatch.net. Let's ease into the science stories here with a graphic on SDO degradation. Folks, the primary solar satellite has been losing sensitivity and they're having to correct the images to get them to look right. Many of you have noticed the changes, especially to 304 and 335 angstroms. This is why. By the way, the lowest degradation is in the lowest wavelength views, like 94, 131, and 171. Right on cue, the rotation speed-up data for Earth is gone again. They have been creeping the shortest day predicted for 2021 back and back and faster and faster. And for the third time this year, data wiped and gone. Excellent identification up next of the Lachamp geomagnetic excursion out of Germany. Critical to examine these events as the next one is unfolding right now, right on time. Lachamp was 40-something thousand years ago, Mono Lake was 30-something thousand years ago, Lake Mungo about 24,000 years ago, and Gothenburg about 12,000 years ago. It's not only time, but Earth's magnetic field is fading right on cue. And that's a key topic of our last story today, but it requires going back first into the climate realm. Folks, our climate playlist is very thorough. From our 2019 movie to the broken down solar forcing pathways to the newly identified crippling problems of the modern models that don't include the sun. In May, we released a video called Climate Science Destroyed in Eight Minutes. It hit so many nerves. They sent 10 professors and national lab scientists to try to debunk the video, which they failed to do. And in the last video, my response to them, the climate frauds on the hook, it's now well thought that their fraud was demonstrated and not a single one of them has responded. But the mini fight was based on this listed breakdown of vectors of failure for climate science. And today, we're going to be combining A3, oversensitivity to CO2, with B4, Earth's geomagnetic field, and watch the reaction catalyze. As a reminder, it was last year that the major bombshell from nature came out, suggesting that ozone depletion was responsible for half the Arctic warming, not CO2, which is actually a third of all global warming, to give you an idea of how lopsided the temperature changes on our planet have been. And that's where we pointed to Earth's geomagnetic field loss in the modern excursion and required the recollection that the northern polar cusp happens to be the preferred entry and joule heating point for solar particles. Folks, Let's go ahead and strengthen that argument today. In addition to more solar forcing at the poles with the weakening magnetic field, it is also changing how carbon dioxide mixes into the atmosphere. Basically, with extra joule heating from the sun, which they thankfully peg as the culprit in this paper, it is not only heating the polar zone more efficiently, but it's causing an increased effect of the atmospheric chemistry, all due to Earth's weakening magnetic field. Folks. That's how good climate science cleans up the mess of bad climate science and then picks up the pieces and heads right into Earth's cyclical catastrophe. No reservations or travel needed. She will come to us. We greatly appreciate your support. Reminder that Kat's children's book reading is tomorrow at A Likely Story. 
More information can be found on our Facebook page. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.